What's your newest project of something new that you're going to do? Oh, I'm becoming a beekeeper. Tell me. Tell you about it? Well, I, I've wanted to do this for years. It always interests me, but I knew that it was going to take quite a bit of setup to get into it. Yeah. It's not the kind of hobby that requires a lot of your time on a day-to-day -day basis. But getting into it is quite entailed and, and I knew that there's a huge amount of education that I had to have to bring up where I felt comfortable with it. And Jeannie says I'm being obsessive about it and I and I obsess about new projects. But I've always done this. Uh -huh. If I obsess about something before I get into it and study everything I possibly can, yeah. I ensure success. And my first wife we didn't, me and Sybil loved each other, but we didn't have shared interests, uh -huh. and so I didn't talk to her about it, you know. Uh -huh. I'd obsess on something all by myself without it involving her, and then I'd go do it, and I'd have success. So what's involved? What's if I jump into something uh -huh. off of my gut, uh -huh. a lot of times I have failure. Oh, you know? okay. And, and so... But with Jeannie, I share with her what's going on in my mind all the time while I'm thinking about it. And I never stop thinking about something while I'm getting into it. It's in my mind all the time while I'm cooking. I uh, visualize uh -huh. all the steps and what it'll be like and what it'll take to make it happen. And uh, I'm starting off by building a hive. And uh, I'm going to build a, what they call a warre hive. It's based on a fella's named Emile Waré, who was a monk in France. And he created a totally different kind of hive that is uh, it's a modified top bar hive, which means that they don't have frames down in them, like what we call standard Langstrom hives. Yeah. And uh, uh, it has all kinds of benefits, people believe, of raising healthier bees, less disease problems. Uh, the disadvantages to it is you don't get quite as much honey and you get a lot more wax. So you have to ask yourself, is wax just as valuable a resource to me as honey is? Uh -huh. And in our case it is. We can use the beeswax. That's one of the reasons why we want to do it. Oh, what do you use beeswax for? Uh, candles. Lubrication, uh, skin creams, wow. uh, soaps. We use it for all kinds of things. Now, when yeah. when will you start? I literally start. Are you cogitating enough? We won't to... really get much of a harvest problem. I'm going to start it in the spring, but I don't. We, we don't expect to get much of a harvest until maybe late in the year, or maybe now, the next year, because your hive has to grow. Well, where do you get your bees? Where will you get your bees? Oh, we'll, we'll, the first lot we're going to get will buy package bees. Huh. We'll buy bees from a certified farm. Okay. And they just mail them to you. They come in a little box all buzzing in there and you, and you put them in your, in your hive. Uh -huh. So you're going to have to get Jeannie a full bee suit because she's allergic to bee stings. Uh -huh. And I can't have her screaming when we're handling the bees. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But uh, most of the people that work with bees for very long, at the most, they might put a veil on uh -huh. over their face, and that's it. Most of them, they just learn how to handle them barehanded. And the bees get used to you, you know. Oh. They get used to your smell, and they know you're okay. So.